Welcome to Theory of Pets. I'm a passionate pet owner with a drive to help others like me uncover the truth about the pet industry and what goes on behind the scenes. Hey guys, I've got a great interview for you today. If you remember one of my previous podcasts, I spoke with Dr. Jennifer Adolph. She is the pet nutritionist for Pet Curian. Pet Curian is a premium pet food company for dogs and cats, and they've just released a new line called Gather. And Gather is made with certified and organic ingredients, and it also focuses on sustainability. Sustainability is something in the pet industry that I don't think a lot of pet parents are aware of. Um, And so I wanted to talk to Dr. Adolph today about uh, sustainability, organic quality pet foods, different kinds of high quality pet foods, um, and why those products are more expensive, why they're a little bit harder to come by. Uh, I think a lot of times when we're thinking about a diet for our dog, you know, obviously we want to feed the best and highest quality nutrition, but sometimes the cost of that just outweighs the benefits, I guess, for lack of a better term that we we see in the dog food. So um, Dr. Adolph spoke with me today again about Gather, their new line, what makes a pet food a high quality pet food, what the things are that we should be looking for when we are uh, purchasing pet foods. And then again, you know, just about um, sustainability and those organic, healthy, natural ingredients. So I will let you guys listen to the interview and then I'll come back. Last time we spoke about the humanization of pet food and we're seeing that trend in the pet industry now. Um, So we're seeing more and more pet owners feeding natural, organic, um, you know, higher quality. We have like the paleo diet for pets now. Um, So we're seeing that humanization. Can you give our listeners just a quick recap of that trend and why it's becoming so popular? Yes, for sure. Humanization of of pets and pet food does seem to be continuing on the upswing. And we think it's because pets are increasingly being viewed as important members of the family, and people really want to feed their pets the same way that they feed themselves. So there's lots of trends that we see in the human world that translate into the pet world, including high-protein, low-carbohydrate diets, gluten-free or grain-free diets, limited ingredient diets, or um, in the human world, this translates to clean label diets, and uh, vegetarian diets are also becoming more popular. So people really want to feed their pets the healthiest foods possible, and these trends that are seen in the human world transition into the pet world. One of the things to think about, though, is whether the trends really apply to pets, and we still need to make sure that that pets are being fed the nutrients and all of the nutrition that they require. Pets are not uh, furry little humans. They do have different nutritional requirements, and so it's important to make sure that the food is meeting all of those requirements. And one of the biggest trends right now in both the human and pet food world is sustainability, transparency, and organic ingredients. And so we see in the news almost daily stories about extreme weather conditions, and consumers really want to take some control over that. And uh, so the food choices that they make is one way that they can do so both for themselves and for their pets so that they can minimize their ecological footprint. So in 2016, Pecurian launched a new brand of pet food called Gather for dogs and cats. And our our thought process behind Gather was to create a new kind of pet food that uses uh, ingredients with a sustainability focus. So we searched for um, farmers, growers, fishers to really focus on sustainability to provide the ingredients for Gather. And uh, we were really excited to launch this product, and so it's been out now for about a year and it's really exciting to see how people are excited about feeding their pets a food that has a sustainability focus. Absolutely. And I know, um, you know, it's made with organic ingredients as well. And that's a big focus for a lot of pet owners because they're looking at the health aspect, but they're not 
thinking on the sustainability aspect of where are those uh, ingredients coming from and are they, you know, from sustainable resources? Are we using, um, you know, resources for our pets that uh, should be being used for people, things like that are questions on, um, you know, the sustainability front. So I think it's, um, it's something that hasn't quite come fully into light yet and I was really excited um, to hear about Gather and, and just hear that it, there's now a, um, a line of pet food that's focusing on that sustainability. It is, um, like you said, it's it's a growing trend so I think over the next few years we're going to see a lot more focus on sustainability. It's definitely becoming uh, more popular and uh, I, I definitely expect to see that continue to grow. Yes, I would agree. It's, uh, it's- definitely becoming more and more of a focus. So when we use these higher quality ingredients, organic, natural ingredients, um, and you're focusing on, you know, ingredients that are from sustainable sources, it increases the expense of the food. And unfortunately, I hear so many people all the time when they're asking questions about dog food, the number one concern always seems to be price. A lot of people shop just simply based on price, they'll grab the the cheapest thing um, on the shelf to feed their pets. So it, it is a huge factor. Of course, we're all on budgets. Um, so can you explain why these products, um, they are more expensive. The I should say the sticker price is more expensive, which is what most people um, are looking at. When you look at the actual cost of the food that you can feed less of these higher quality diets and things like that, you know, the expense isn't as extreme, um, but people don't realize that. So can you talk a little bit about the expense of these products? Yes, for sure. So um, there's many factors that go into the cost of, of food, both for, for humans and our pets. And one of the primary factors is the types of ingredients that the food includes. And so the the ingredients that are in a a higher price pet food do cost more than uh, some of the lower price foods. So for example, an ingredient like chicken meal, uh, which is um, a single source meat um, protein in that's common in pet food is a lot significantly more expensive than um, a similar ingredient like poultry byproduct meal. So um, so that's one of the main factors that contributes to the cost of, of pet food. And then when you look at certified ingredients like organic or marine stewardship council certified seafood, the cost is increased further because of the added expense of getting those certifications. The entire supply chain needs to comply with the standard that is set out by the certification, and that usually involves expenses for the, the grower, the farmer, the producer throughout the supply chain in order to comply with those standards. And then in addition to that, in order to obtain that certification, third-party auditors need to come in and perform audits to ensure compliance. And there is a cost, of course, associated with that as well. And so the more complex the certification, uh, the more the more cost is associated with it. So organic is actually quite an involved certification. It's a long process to, to be in compliance with the organic standard. And so as you can see, when you're shopping for your own groceries, organic foods are a lot higher cost than and non-organic foods, and that has to do with uh, the type of growing methods, the actual certification audits themselves, etc. So when you're looking at pet food, the same applies. So if you have organic ingredients in that food, you're paying um, for that that certification and that philosophy that um, of organic, and and you've made that decision to, ch- to feed your pet. Um, a higher price food because of the the meaning behind those ingredients. And we also know that the demand for organic ingredients continues to be significantly higher than the supply. And we all know um, from Economics 101 that when demand outstrips supply, that, that the prices go up. So um, 
it's quite an involved process for farmers to transition to growing organic. So there's significant time and financial investment. And so that um, comes across in the in the sticker price. But it's, it's really um, comes down to making that, that decision to, to feed uh, an organic product or a premium product um, with those, those um, premium ingredients. Absolutely. You made some really excellent points that I think a lot of people don't really think about. And it's funny that when we're shopping for our own food at the grocery store, we do take into account those things. But then when we turn around and shop for pet food, we tend to not think as much about supply and demand, um, you know, issues like that, increasing the cost of our pet's food. So um, some some great points there. And I think some the other things that people need to think about is, um, and it's it can be difficult to do, but um, comparing the price per serving of the food that you buy instead of just the price per bag. Um, obviously, bags run in different sizes. You can buy 25 pounds or 35 pounds of dog food at a time. Um, and then the serving size, some only need, you know, whereas a, a lower quality food, you might have to feed two cups a day. Um, you know, a higher quality food, you don't have to feed as much. So you might be able to only feed one cup a day of the more expensive, healthier product. So you're actually, you know, the cost per serving is actually much uh, lower than what it would be with a cheaper product. Yes, and also on that note, something to think about is that um, we're, we're approaching about 50% of the pet population being overweight or, or obese, and that really means that pet parents are tending to overfeed their pets. So if you take some time to figure out the ideal amount of food that your pet needs to maintain an ideal body weight, and we have information on our website at petcurian.com about, um, we have what are called body score charts um, to help pet parents identify if their pets have an ideal body weight. But if you can really dial in how much you're feeding your pet, you can probably cut back a little bit um, so that it's, it's not as expensive to feed your pet because you're feeding less food to maintain that healthy body weight. Absolutely. Obesity is becoming an epidemic for, for humans and um, for people. So I always, if I get the opportunity to touch on obe- obesity, I always try to because it is becoming such um, an issue. So just for anybody that's listening that might be interested in looking at those body score charts, I'll link to those on our website as well. So um, they can click on there and jump over and see those charts because it is so important to make sure um, obesity, which is a huge topic for another day, but but um, it leads to so many health issues with your pet. So, um, and and also obviously expense is a factor. If you're feeding less, you're not paying as much for uh, your food. So I will link to that so people can get that information from petcurian.com as well. Great. Yes, and and uh, maintaining a healthy body weight also keeps your pet healthier, which helps to avoid veterinary expenses as well. Absolutely. So it's multi multi positive. Absolutely. So now to get back to um, the ingredients, the higher quality ingredients, we have seen so many pet food recalls in recent years. Um, A lot of dog foods, a lot of dog treats. Um, There was the big issue with um, ingredients coming from countries that have limited regulations such as China. Um, So I think that brought to light and a lot of pet parents are, are realizing now that the regulations on pet food are much less strict than on human food. I think a lot of pet owners had that, just that idea that, you know, the government regulates pet food, so they must regulate it the same way that they regulate human food, which is absolutely untrue. And I think a lot of these recalls are sort of bringing that to light. Um, are the recalls and the regul? Uh, sorry, the recalls. <laughs> I mean, are the regulations for... Um, organic, healthier ingredients, natural ingredients, are they more strict than the regulations that are on um, the pet foods made with lower quality ingredients? So the regulations for pet food are the same across 
um, the type of food or the type of ingredients. But what is different between a certified ingredient and a non-certified ingredient, such as an organic certified ingredient, is that the organic certified ingredient has had to go through kind of another level of scrutiny um, and that in order to get that certification, the supply chain has had to undergo that third-party audit in order to ensure compliance with the organic standard. Um, so although the, the, the regulations themselves don't change, um, the, the process of getting that certification for the ingredient is different. Um, and, but just to clarify, in the in the U.S., there there actually are quite um, involved regulations for for pet food, and we know as an industry, there's always room for improvement in in both the human and pet food regulations and food safety. Um, but the Association of American Feed Control Officials, in partnership with the FDA, um, does does. Uh, sets of regulations for pet food. And so when you're choosing a pet food, it's important to consider the the types of food safety steps that the company has in place to ensure um, production of high quality and safe food. And um, so looking at the company's website or contacting them directly for this information is important. And something else to consider is that companies that export around the world to lots of different companies to lots of different countries must meet the regulatory standards of all of those different countries. And so, and each country has slightly different regulations. So if a company is exporting um, around the world, then this just adds to the, the level of regulatory screening that the product must undergo. And so this is an added insurance policy from a consumer perspective. So, um, so checking into that, uh, looking looking into the manufacturer behind your your dog or cat food is an excellent um, way to to ensure a added level of food safety. Excellent. That's great advice. Uh, if you have, let's say, two bags of dog food, one on the label says made with organic ingredients and the other says made with certified organic ingredients, is that the same thing or different? The term organic is is a controlled term, so you can't use the term organic without that ingredient being um, being certified through a, a certifying body. So, um, if it says organic peas, for example, then that's a certified organic peas. Um, the there are different for the organic regulations are, are a little bit complex and so there's different rules um, about how you can label a product depending on how much organic content is in the food um, and, but um, the term organic itself is, is a controlled term so um, you're not allowed to use it unless it is a certified organic ingredient. Okay, excellent. Um, and what should pet owners be aware of as far as food labeling goes when they're looking for the a good quality food for their dog or cat? What are some of the things that they should be um, aware of and maybe looking for or not looking for? It can definitely be a daunting task to choose the right food for, for your pet. Um, pet Curian, we we don't believe in a one-for-all philosophy for pets because each each dog and cat has its own unique needs. The food that, that feeds well for one pet may not do so well for for another. So um, you can looking at the bag, um, reviewing the list of ingredients on the bag is a good place to start. Um, speak with the company. Each ingredient should be uh, selected to play a specific nutritional or functional role in the food, and it's important to note that pet foods must list the ingredients in descending order by weight. So the first ingredient in the ingredient list is the ingredient that the food contains in the greatest quantity. Also look beyond the label, evaluate the company behind the brand, ensure that the food is formulated by a qualified nutritionist so that it provides all of the nutrients that your pet needs, make sure it's 
meets extremely high quality and safety standards. And also um, call the company and see who who you can ask, who you can speak with if you have any questions. Do they have um, people who can actually provide you with answers to your questions and, and help you select the food that's right for your pet? Um, on our website, Picurian.com, we have a food finder, which is a resource that a lot of people turn to when trying to choose the right food for their for their pet. And we also have a, a team of health and nutrition specialists that people can actually uh, speak to in this uh, digital age and get some, get some answers and some help and answer nutrition questions related to their pet. So finally, let's talk a little bit because, of course, as we touched on earlier, everybody is on a budget and the food that you feed your pet is such a huge uh, part of your pet budget. So for pet owners that are on a budget, what are some of the things or a few of the things um, that you think just absolutely must have in a quality pet food? So choosing a food really uh, depends on your type of pet, their breed, their life stage, their activity level, their overall general health, whether they have any health concerns. Um, so, so it's really hard to um, specify specific must-haves, um, it's, but what's important is to try to choose a food that works more small for your pet. So, so read the label, look for, look for the ingredients. Does your pet have any adverse food reactions? Um, identifying those can be, can be challenging, but looking at the ingredient label for ingredients that you suspect may not agree with your dog or cat is a, is a first step. Also look at the guaranteed analysis for information about protein, fat, and fiber levels and the calorie content. If your dog or cat is uh, carrying a few extra pounds, you may need to consider a uh, weight loss food. Um, and it's also important to remember that the feeding guidelines on the bag are really just a just a place to start. Um, energy requirements vary dramatically from one pet to another. Even even dogs or cats that look very similar in terms of their their weight and and body condition may have very different calorie requirements. So it's important to adjust how much you're eating based on their body weight and body condition score, not just the feeding guidelines on the bay. Um, visit, visit the company's website. Um, on our website, um, we have detailed product information and nutritional analysis for, for the Go Now Fresh and Gather brands. Um, so this includes the nutritional information and helps pet parents choose the right food for their dogs and cats. Um, it can be a little bit of trial and error to find a food that is ideal and works well for your pets, but ideally the food should be well-liked, um, maintain a healthy skin and coat, um, soft but firm uh, stools, and um, keeps your pets vibrant and healthy. So um, we really don't believe in a, a good ingredient, bad ingredient, or um, one food for all philosophy, but really offering a variety of different foods so that pet parents have choice to find a food that meets their pet's needs. And what are some things, um, because so many people choose their food based just on price alone, what are some of the things that you would advise pet owners absolutely stay away from when they're shopping for a food for their pet? Um, again, there, there aren't really uh, good, good ingredients or bad ingredients. Um, the ingredients that are included in, in pet food must um, be nutritious and be approved ingredients. Um, but really, the most important factor in choosing a pet food is to find a food that your individual dog or cat thrives on. So again, um, they should be at an ideal body weight, like healthy, with bright eyes, bushy tail, soft coat, um, enjoy eating the food. Um, and if, if these factors aren't met, then um, don't just stick with the food because you think it's the best food. Um, if, if any of these issues are, are 
if any of these are a concern, then consider switching. And remember that proper transitioning from one food to another is important to um, so that you don't kind of shock your pet's digestive system and uh, a proper transition can really um, help your pet adjust to the new food. So start by adding about 10% of the, the new food to your pet's current food and just increase that really gradually um, over a period of 10, 10 days to two weeks to see if the new food will work for your pet. Um, it can take several weeks to really um, determine if the food is working well for your pet. And again, it can take some trial and error to find the food that works the best. And uh, again, we have a team of health and nutrition specialists that can help you determine um, the right food for your pet, and uh, they can be contacted through our website at petcarrion.com. And our philosophy is that we will will help you find the right food for your pet, even if it's not one of our own foods, because we really just want um, pets to thrive and and find a food that works, works well for them. Wonderful. And again, you know, for anybody listening that's interested in uh, speaking with one of the um, nutritionists for Pet Curian, I will link to your website and they can jump on there um, and check that out. And also obviously check out all the different pr- um, products that you offer and the Gather, the new Gather line that is made of um, certified organic and sustainable ingredients. I hope that you guys enjoyed the information from Dr. Adolf as much as I did. It's always great to have her here on Theory of Pets. She is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to nutrition for our canine and feline companions. Um, I think that sustainability is a great thing that we should be focusing on with the growing human population population and the growing pet population. It's always something to be concerned about, the sustainability of our resources and how long we're going to be able to keep going, uh, feeding the things that we're feeding our pets and eating the things that we as humans are eating as well. Uh, So if you guys have any questions, again, you can jump on theoryofpets.com and you can either uh, type your questions out in a Uh, message that will get sent to me or you can record your messages if you want to as well and those may be featured on uh, one of our podcasts coming up if you've got a question that you've been wondering about with your dog or cat and you think that I might be able to get to the bottom of it for you I would love to hear your questions and again I uh, if you record them I may use them on a future podcast so uh, be prepared for that or if that's something that you're interested in Um, and also if you guys could just jump on iTunes really quickly if you're listening to this through iTunes or if you have an iTunes account and you can just jump on and uh, give us a quick review. That really helps me to spread the word about Theory of Pets. So I'd really appreciate that. I hope you guys enjoyed my interview with Dr. Adolph and I will be back with another podcast episode next week. Thanks for listening.